All right, so what we're talking about today is still stoichiometry. It's still calculations that go with reactions. All of the stuff that we've done before still applies. We've done mole to mole problems. Those were the short ones. That was the first one on your quiz. We've done mass to mass problems. Those are the long ones. That was the second one on your quiz. We've also done percent yield. What does percent yield tell you? How much came out? How much did you get? How well did you do? Kind of like a percent that you do for your grade. What we're going to add this week is one more little twist to these calculations. This is going to be the last set of notes that we do before we test. So all of this week, we're practicing with this new little twist on calculations. We're going to do a lab, we'll do a review, and then by the time we get to Friday, we'll be testing already. So hopefully you still remember some of the things we did before spring break. Before we get to writing things down, we have just a couple of little example questions, kind of to get you thinking about uh, the idea that we have for today. So we're using a little food example. No, sorry, there's no visuals for this. No food. It's just a question. To make a s'more, typically you would need two graham crackers, three squares of chocolate, give or take a little bit, and one marshmallow. This is how I would make a s'more. This would be my recipe for a s'more. Just like recipes for food, we know chemical reactions have recipes too. And here's your first example question. If you have 20 graham crackers, 30 squares of chocolate, and 10 marshmallows, how many s'mores can you make? Did you have any pieces left over? No. No? Did you run out of anything? No. No. I gave you perfect amounts in this question. I gave you amounts that were that same ratio, 2 to 3 to 1. Here's your next question. What if you have 40 crackers, 30 chocolate squares, and 20 marshmallows? Still 10 pieces left over. Maybe so. So graham crackers would get divided by 2 per s'more, so that'd be 20. 30 chocolate squares divided by 3 makes 10, right? 20 marshmallows divided by 1 makes 20, which is the least amount of s'mores. 10. You can make 10. Because after you make 10, what have you run out of? Chocolate. So you could maybe eat the rest of the leftover ingredients, but you really can't make any more true s'mores after you've run out of one thing. How about this one? 18 crackers, 30 chocolate squares, and 10 marshmallows. It's a fraction. Make eight. Is it nine? Well, check each thing. 18 crackers would give you how many s'mores? Um, nine. Nine. 30 chocolate squares? Ten. Ten. Marshmallows? Ten. Ten. Smallest amount of those three? Nine. Nine. So again, you have leftover pieces, but once you run out of one thing, you can't make any more true s'mores. You could eat the leftover pieces and they'd still be delicious, but you're done making s'mores after you run out of one item. That same th thing, and here's where we're going to start writing things down, that same thing applies to chemical reactions. Sometimes you may run out of one of your ingredients before you run out of another. And when you run out of one thing, that limits or controls how much product you get. So we call that one thing the limiting reactant. If you run out of something, whatever you run out of limits or determines the amount of product that you get.
Another word that you sometimes see in place of reactant is reagent. Reactant and reagent mean the same thing. So a limiting reagent and a limiting reactant, it's both the same. It just means what ingredient are you running out of? If you have something that you run out of, chances are you'll also have something where you have things left over. Whatever's left over is called the excess reactant because you had that in excess. You had more than you needed. So the reactant that there is more than enough of is called the excess reactant. You had extra, kind of sounds the same. You had more than you needed. The excess reactant will have extra leftovers when the reaction is complete. These would be the pieces of the s'mores that you had left over. One ingredient ran out, you had extras of the other two, so you had one limiting reactant, and with the s'mores you had two excess reactants. Now, if you're going to keep going with the food examples, we've compared stoichiometry to like baking and recipes before. If you're going to bake something like cookies or brownies or cake, typically you would go to your kitchen cabinets or your pantry and you would check to make sure that you have everything that you need and that you have enough of it before you even start. It'd be pretty silly to get halfway through a cake batter and realize you don't have any eggs. So, Usually, if you're actually going to kind of carry through with this food idea, you would check for a limiting reactant <laughs> before you even start. We don't have a pantry that we can go to to check for a limiting reactant. We have to do calculations to check for a limiting reactant. The good news is that you already know how to do the calculations. We just haven't applied them like this before. So just like the s'mores, the same thing happens in chemical reactions. You do calculations to figure out which thing will run out and which thing you'll have extras of. Let's take a real simple example here first. We're going to look at this just in terms of molecules. Instead of doing our numbers with grams and moles yet, we're going to look at this first one just with molecules. We've seen this equation before. Hydrogen plus oxygen makes water. Is it balanced? Yes. Yes. Hopefully you recognize that already. Let's say, we're going to draw some pictures here. You go to your chemical pantry and you find in your chemical pantry four molecules of H2. This is like your given information. You're checking your ingredients. How much do you have? and you see four molecules of H2. Are we drawing this? Yep, we're drawing this. And you could do, I have two different colored circles up here. You could do open circles and closed circles if you want to show the difference between the hydrogen and the oxygen. How many atoms of hydrogen do we have here? Eight. Four molecules, eight atoms. First piece of given information, you've gone to your chemical pantry and you've found four molecules of H2. Second piece of given information, also in your chemical pantry you find three molecules of O2. How many atoms of oxygen is that? Six. Six. Are you just making the numbers up? Yes. Okay. This would be your given information, just like you would get in a story problem. So let's figure out how much water we can make. Each water has to have how many hydrogens? And how many oxygens? Two and one. 
So every time we use two hydrogens, we have to use one oxygen. So look at your pantry, start making waters. Two hydrogens, one oxygen. Two hydrogens, one oxygen. Two hydrogens, one oxygen. What did we run out of? Uh, hydrogens. Hydrogens. We used all of our hydrogens. Once you've used all the hydrogens, can you make more water? Mm, no, I can't make that. No, you can't make more water. How many extra oxygen atoms were there? Two. Two left over. So one molecule of O2 was left over. With this given information, with this story problem, at most we could make four molecules of water. And after we made those four molecules of water, then we were done. We ran out of hydrogen. We did have some oxygen left over, but that's not going to be enough to make more water. Are we good with this idea? This idea that something runs out and something is left over? Yeah. <laughs> so, using this last story problem here, we could label hydrogen as the limiting reactant and oxygen as the excess reactant. Usually I abbreviate these LR and ER just to make it a little shorter to write down. Hydrogen is the thing we ran out of, so that limits or controls how much water we get. Oxygen is the thing that was left over, so we had oxygen in excess. We had more than we needed. All right, so how do we actually deal with this in terms of grams and moles? Things that we could actually measure in a lab. We can't count out molecules. So we have to use grams and moles. How do you solve limiting reactant problems? Limiting reactant problems are set up almost the same way that your mass to mass problems have been. But instead of just doing one calculation and solving and you're done, you're actually going to end up doing two. The reason you have to do two is you have to figure out which ingredient is going to run out first. Then you can figure out how much product you would make. Kind of like checking your pantry. Which ingredients running out, how much product can we get? So story problems now sound like this. If 18.1 grams of ammonia is reacted with 90.4 grams of copper two oxide, which is the limiting reactant and how many grams of solid copper will be produced. It's not too much different than the story problems we've already done. There's one key difference with these. Look at your given information. Yeah, it asked you for that for one thing, but how many numbers do you usually start with? One. One. How many do you have here? Two. two. So if you're given two amounts, that's a pretty good clue that you're going to have to find a limiting reactant. Okay, so step one. As always, if you need to, write an equation and balance the equation. So I've taken pity on you and given you the equation here, but we still need to balance it. Two, three, one, three, three. Do we agree? Yeah. Yep, me too. Step two. Pick one of the reactants and one of the products. 
you're going to end up doing calculations for both reactants. So it makes no difference which one you do first. Of the products, you will save yourself some time and effort if you pick the product the question is asking you about. So look at your story problem, look at your question, which product are we being asked to find? The solid copper. So it would make the most sense if we use that as our product. Using the given amount of reactant, and again, you're going to do both, so you just pick one, figure out how much product you would get. This is a three-step mass-to-mass problem. Just so we all stay on the same page, we're going to start with the ammonia first. Again, when you're doing these on your own, it makes no difference which reactant you start with. You're going to do them both anyway. Okay, so jog your brain after spring break. What do we do next? Uh, one mole goes right on, the top. on the top. What do we put on the bottom? What it weighs. What it weighs. So add up the pieces. Approximately 14 plus 17. So 17. 0.04. 0.04. Yep, get the numbers from the equation. So we need moles of ammonia from the equation. That was a two. What product are we switching to? Copper. Copper. So moles from the equation. Three. And the last step? Weight over the weight over one mole. So you look up copper, it's all by itself this time. 63.55. How many sig figs should we keep? Three. Two, one, three. Three. <laughs> three. Remember, you check all your gram numbers. Check the 18, check the 17, check the 63. So we're going to keep three sig figs. Depending on how you round for these, you come up with approximately 101 grams of copper. Depending on how you like to do your math. Now up to this point, up till today, this would have been the end of the problem and we would be done. We're not done this time because we have to figure out between our two reactants, which one runs out? And after that one runs out, how much product do we get? So now we have to do a second calculation. Step three, now take the other reactant and repeat step two with the same product you used before. You always wanna compare two calculations with the same product. So this time, We'll start with our 90.4 grams of copper oxide. And we'll do the same problem that we did before, looking for how much copper is produced. So we cancel the grams of copper oxide, and then what numbers from the equation do we need? Three. And three. Mm -hmm. What happens to the threes right here? They cancel out one. They cancel. So do you even need to put those in your calculator? Nope, because you know that they cancel. And again, the very last step will be the same. Change to grams of copper. How many sig figs? Three. Depending on how you do your math, you come up with 72.2 grams of copper. Now we've done the hard part. The last thing we have to do is just think about our answers a little bit and decide which one we're going to circle. Because right now we have two answers to pick from.
The first part of our question said, what was the limiting reactant? Which of the two reactants gave us less product? The second one, the 90.4. The 90.4, which was copper oxide. So this is your limiting reactant. Copper 2 oxide is your limiting reactant. Sometimes there'll be a little blank for you to fill that in. Sometimes you'll just have to put like CuO and then put LR next to it, put it in a box. Whichever reactant gave you less product runs out first. So as soon as the copper oxide runs out, your reaction is done. It's over. You can't make any more once you've run out of one thing. So which of your two number answers do you circle? 72.2. The lower one, the 72.2. Using your information from the limiting reactant, go back and answer the original question. 72.2 grams of copper. Let's go ahead and do, let's see, one more probably example. You've got like four on the next page, but we're getting a little close on time, so we'll probably cut it off after one. But let's do at least one practice example where the things are not broken down into steps. This is what your homework is going to look like. All your given information, your story problem kind of at the top, and then blank space. We'll use a really simple equation to start with, a really simple reaction. We've seen this before. And the directions for these examples say determine the limiting reactant in each case. So here's the first one. If you start with 4 grams of hydrogen and 3 grams of oxygen, determine the limiting reactant and then go ahead and circle how much product you would get. Remember, we're going to do two calculations here. So does it matter which one you do first? No. Nope. What product are we looking for? H2O. H2O. Is there any question about that? No. No, because there's only one product to find. So we'll be looking for how much water is produced. I'm going to start with the hydrogen just because it's listed first. You certainly would not have to. And from this point, hopefully we know what to do. These calculations are the same that we've been doing for about a week. Cancel the grams of hydrogen. Change it to moles of hydrogen. Look at your equation. There's two moles of hydrogen in the equation for every two moles of water. Change the moles of water to grams of water. Check your sig figs. Should be keeping two this time. If we used all of our hydrogen, we would make 36 grams of water. Now we need to go back and do the calculation for the oxygen. Almost the same calculation. Cancel your grams of oxygen. Why did I put 32 here and not 16? Because it's O2. Because it's O2. So watch out for that. Check the moles from your equation. One mole of oxygen for every two moles of water. And 
and change back to grams of water. <coughs> Again, check your sig figs. You should keep two. Which of the two reactants gives you less product? Oxygen. So oxygen limits the reaction. Oxygen is your limiting reactant. And which of the two numbers do you circle then? The second one, the lower one. And it will always be the lower one that you circle. What do you think? Are we good? Yeah. Okay.